Hi everybody, I'm Tim Anderson, author of Nanban, Japanese Soul Food. People often ask me to recommend a Japanese recipe they can work into their everyday cooking repertoire. And I always say tempura. Tempura is simple, it requires no specialist ingredients, and it'll take just about anything you have in the fridge. Even though it's simple, it's got some key points you have to bear in mind when you're making it. So I'm going to walk you through the steps with particular focus on the batter, which is key to a grease-free, light, crisp tempura crust. I've got my vegetables all prepped up and ready to go. In this case, courgettes, mushrooms, and broccoli. But you can use really just whatever you have. Just make sure that your vegetables are all prepped up and ready to go before you start making your batter. The batter should always be fresh. It's the last thing you should make before you start frying. Tempura batter has just three ingredients. Cold sparkling water, egg, and plain flour. Beat the egg until it's all smooth. Next, we add cold sparkling water. Now we use sparkling water for the bubbles. The bubbles will stay in that batter and they'll expand and they'll give it a nice lacy structure, which makes it really light. The reason it's cold is because that'll crisp up faster in the oil, which means it'll be less greasy when it comes out. Lastly, we add the flour. Now this step, how you mix it, is crucial. Because we don't want to mix it too much. We want to mix it just until it comes together. There's three reasons for that. First of all, we don't want to knock the bubbles out of that sparkling water. Those are essential. Secondly, we want to keep tiny lumps of flour throughout the batter because those will be full of air. It'll explode in the hot oil and create lots of texture in the crust. Lastly, we don't want to develop the gluten in that flour because a glutinous crust will be kind of soft and papery. That's why I use chopsticks when I mix my tempura batter, because it just gently draws things together without stretching the gluten in the flour. So, we've got our vegetables, we've got our batter, and there's one last key ingredient, and that's the oil. Now, you should use a neutral vegetable oil. I like rapeseed oil, sunflower oil's nice. Pretty much whatever vegetable oil you have on hand will do. The main thing is, it should be clean, and it should be hot. If you've got a deep fat fryer, set it to 180 or 190 degrees, uh, or you can use a thermometer in a pan like this. If you don't have a deep fat fryer or a thermometer, there's a way you can test the temperature of the batter to see if it's just right. Just take a little bit of your batter on your chopsticks and drop it in. If it sinks briefly and then rises to the surface, like it just did, it's perfect. If it sinks and stays there, it's too cold. And if it immediately floats, it's too hot. Now we batter and fry. Use just a few vegetables at a time. If you crowd the pan, they could stick together. and They'll also lower the temperature of the oil. Drain off excess. Carefully lower it into the oil. Remember not to drop your vegetable in from a height so that you don't spatter batter. Now, if your batter is starting to look a bit smooth, like mine is, and you don't see many pockets of flour, just add a bit more, just a pinch. And don't even bother stirring it. The movement of the vegetables when you dredge them will stir them enough. Keep your eye on the vegetables. We're not looking for golden brown so much as platinum blonde. They should be a very light color. But feel them too when you reach in with your tongs. They should feel firm. The batter should be hard to the touch. If not, they need a little more time. It should take about five to six minutes. These look great. They feel great. I think they're good to go. Drain them on paper towel or a wire rack. Now, if you're serving tempura at home, the best way to do it is to gather everybody in the kitchen so people can eat the tempura straight from the fryer. It's really best when it's hot and crisp. If you need to make a lot of tempura and serve it all at once, you can put it on a tray and keep it in a low oven with the door open to let out moisture for a while. Because everyone loves tempura. Nanban, Japanese soul food. Tempura is simple, it requires no specialist ingredients, and it'll take just about anything you have in the fridge.